Well, hello again. This is Alistair McGrath, and I'm a professor of theology at Oxford University. And we come now to the second of a series of 18 short video presentations, which will introduce you to the study of Christian theology. And again, it's only an introduction. But you know, Oxford is a really great place at which to study and teach theology, because theology has been taught at Oxford since the 12th century. In fact, one of Oxford's first major university buildings was a divinity school, which dates back to 1423. And that's where theology was taught for many years at Oxford. Now listen, every theologian has a story to tell about how they discovered theology and what it was that they found there that so excited them. So I'm going to tell you my story. I myself began to study theology back in 1976, but when I arrived at Oxford in 1971, I was actually a student of the natural sciences. So how did I make the transition to theology and why? Well, let me tell you. I was born in Ireland in 1953 and baptised into the Church of Ireland at Down Cathedral a few weeks later. And in 1971, I went to Oxford University to study chemistry. Um, by then, I have to tell you, I had become an aggressive atheist, convinced that science alone was able to answer all of life's important questions. I'm sure you know people like that. I believe then that religion was simply an obsolete relic of the past. And I have to tell you, at the time, there was a widespread consensus that science and religion were at war with each other. And like many teenagers during the late 1960s when I was at high school, I embraced Marxism, which I saw as a, a worldview that made sense of the world and also my place within it. So when I was about 16, I thought I had everything sorted out. But it didn't stay that way. I have to tell you, I began to experience increasing doubts about both my teenage atheism and Marxism, realising that actually both were belief systems that reached beyond the available evidence. I might believe there is no God, but actually I couldn't prove it. Now, I thought that my doubts about my teenage atheism would be resolved when I went to Oxford. Actually, they were made much worse because I had some conversations with very intelligent students who helped me to appreciate the limits placed on human reasoning. And, you know, for the first time, I began to appreciate and even understand a bit the intellectual capaciousness of the Christian faith. And so, to cut a long story short, I decided to embrace Christianity. Now, my teenage experimentations with Marxism actually led me to experience the, the imaginative excitement that is linked with the idea of big picture thinking. When I read C.S. Lewis's essay, Is Theology Poetry, in February 1974, it made me realise that Christianity could be seen as offering exactly this kind of rich vision of reality. And I began to realise, as I read Lewis, that I was going to have to study theology if I was going to grasp this bigger picture and really appreciate it properly. Now, up to that point, I was a scientist. Again, I was studying chemistry at Oxford, but I was certainly getting interested in theology. And after completing my undergraduate degree in chemistry, I went on to do doctoral research in the Department of Biochemistry at Oxford. And that was really great fun. But in my first year of research, I was awarded the scholarship that I discovered would allow me to complete my doctoral research and at the same time study theology at undergraduate level. So for about two years I worked in labs in the morning and afternoons and then studied theology in the evenings and I found the transition to studying theology actually quite difficult and I tried to find a good theological textbook that would assume its readers like me knew nothing about theology at all but actually I never found one like that and I felt there was a real need for someone to write that kind of textbook and as you probably know I did that myself. Uh, I began to realise that my own difficulty in learning theology could be helpful to other people. Anyway, by the summer of 1978, I gained my doctorate in molecular biophysics and also first-class honours in theology from Oxford University. So what did I do next? Well, I noted that two of the theologians I'd studied at Oxford, who found, by the way, I found really interesting, were Jürgen Moltmann and Wolfhard Pannenberg, and both of them began their careers by studying theologians from their past. You can read their doctoral theses. Uh, Moltmann looked at a sort of Calvinist writer and uh, Pannenberg looked at Duns Scotus. 
And this gave them a solid historical basis for developing their own approaches. So I thought this will work for me too. So I decided to do the same. And I moved to Cambridge University for two years in 1978 to take up the Naden Studentship in Divinity at St. John's College, Cambridge, and also to uh, explore the um, German theologian Martin Luther. And that really turned out to be fascinating and led to my first three books, uh, all of which were published after I returned to Oxford to teach theology in 1983. Luther's Theology of the Cross, published in 1985. Justitia Dei, History of the Christian Doctrine of Justification, published in 1986 and The Intellectual Origins of the European Reformation, published in 1987. And really, these were the outcome of my early historical studies in theology. And in fact, they, they were very well received, and they led to me becoming Professor of Historical Theology at Oxford University from 1999 to 2008. Now, for much of that period at Oxford, I gave a lecture course in Christian theology, in which I tried to introduce my students to as much theology as I could fit into 16 lectures, which is what Oxford allowed me. And my approach is really very simple. I would assume that my students knew nothing about theology, and I would introduce and explain everything to them. And in discussion with those students, I worked out what issues they'd like me to cover, which ways of explaining them seemed to work best, and how to organise the material. And so each year, the course changed a bit, as I, in effect, changed things in response to student feedback. And an Oxford publisher heard about these lectures, which had attracted a lot of attention on account of their accessibility, and asked me to turn these into a basic theology textbook. And I did, and that book is Christian Theology and Introduction, which first appeared in 1993, and is now going strong in its sixth edition. Now, having come to the study of theology from the natural sciences, it was, I suppose, natural that I would be interested in exploring the relation of science and religion. For writers like Richard Dawkins, they're at war with each other, but I didn't really think that was reliable historically. What were the alternatives to this so-called warfare model of their relationship? And obviously, I had a personal interest in this question. I want to sort this thing out for myself, because it affected me personally. How could I hold together my love of science and my growing love for Christian theology? And in the end, I worked out some approaches while I was establishing myself as a scholar who was active in the field of science and religion. I now hold the Andreas Idris Professor of Science and Religion at Oxford, which I took up in 2014. Now, in 2006, the new atheism arrived on the scene in Britain and in North America. And I'd already had some discussions with Richard Dawkins at Oxford about his views on the relation of science and faith. And so I was well placed to take part in the public debate that followed the publication of his book, The God Delusion, in 2006. And that, I think, was a very interesting debate. It was all about this very popular perception that science and religion are at war. And I got very heavily involved in this debate and it made me realise how important theology is in public engagement. So for three years, I took up the Gresham Professorship of Divinity in the City of London from 2015 to 2018. That's a really interesting appointment. It goes back to 1597 at Gresham College. And the chair was founded way back then, in the days of the first Queen Elizabeth, to encourage wider public engagement with theological issues. And I did that, and I really enjoyed doing it. So, much more I could say, but my own case, I think, illustrates some general points about what it is that draws people to study Christian theology. Let me highlight, if I may, three of these. First, I was originally drawn to theology because I realised it would give a new depth to my emerging faith. Second, Theology helped me to answer some questions that were personally important. In my case, how I could hold together my love of science and Christianity. And third, theology gave me a rigorous foundation for public engagement at a time when this really did matter. Now, that's, that's me. That's what I get out of studying theology. And you'll find you get out other things as well. Because there are other reasons for studying theology. There are other reasons for doing this. And I've told you my story simply to give you an idea of the possibilities. 
Your story will be different from mine, I'm sure. But my point is this. We all come to the study of theology with different background, different questions, different hopes. And my hope is that this series of short and informal presentations on the key themes of Christian theology and their application will be helpful to you as you think things through for yourself. Now, if you want to know more about my own journey of discovery, uh, how I became interested in theology, how I made links with science, you might like this book, which is called Through a Glass Darkly, Journeys Through Science, Faith and Doubt. And that might be interesting for you to read. But I think that's enough by way of introductions. I think it's time for us to start studying theology seriously. So let's move on and look at the question of the sources of theology. Where does theology get its ideas from? Well, I look forward to exploring this question with you in the next presentation. Thank you so much for listening.